Hello and welcome to this week's Show It website tutorial where I'll be sharing how to use the alignment tools as well as the size and position area of Show It. When you're creating your website, you obviously want things to be centered and evenly spaced, so I'm going to show you how to do all those things and also how to use the Show It edge locking tool. I'm going to share my screen right now and show you how to do all those things. Okay. So alignment allows you to horizontally and vertically center individual objects and groups of objects to a canvas. So first of all, a canvas, um, if you have a page selected open, I have one of my templates open. If you're over here on the left and you click a page, you'll see that there are all these horizontal bars. So each of these is what's called a canvas. Okay. So you can center individual objects in this canvas. So let's say that I want to center this text. Okay. So right now it's centered. The way that I got it centered was I used some alignment tools that are under size and position. So if you have a single object selected over here on the right under size and position, you'll see there's an area to center to canvas. The only time the alignment tools actually show up are when is when you have more than one object selected. So for a single option, I have the option, a single object, I have the option to center this horizontally and vertically. So I'm going to center it vertically to the canvas. And now I'm going to send uh, center it horizontally. If I do it horizontally, that's not where I want it, but you get the idea. So that's how you would horizontally and vertically center a single object to a canvas. I use this vertical button all the time. This is the vertical one. Let's look at how we can align a group of objects. So let's say I have this group of objects selected here. I am going to want to align this entire group to my canvas. Okay. So let's say I'm going to, I'm going to make this canvas bigger to show you how to do it. So right now it's at 600. I'm going to change it to 1000 and you can see that it needs to be aligned horizontally. And let's just see, like, let's say it's over here. Okay. So that's not aligned. So I want to make sure that it's aligned vertically and horizontally. So I'm just going to drag my mouse to select everything. And now you'll see on the right, all of those alignment tools pop up because I have more than one object selected on the stage. So what I can do is align the entire group to the canvas horizontally and vertically as is. So if I want to align it vertically, I hit this button to vertically center it. And if I want to align it horizontally centered, I would hit this button to align to the canvas. So it's aligning this entire group to this canvas, which is 1000 pixels wide. And here's a note to make use of. You'll note that let's say I'm going to move this image here. I'm going to move this image here. We'll move this image here. Okay. So now you see this group of objects is not aligned vertically to each other right? So let's say I select the whole group. If I hit this vertically align center to canvas button, it's going to align the group as is centered. It's not going to center the individual objects to be aligned. So watch, I'm going to, uh, let's see. Okay. So like it's off center right now, I'm going to hit it. It's going to there. It vertically aligned it as is notice. It did not vertically align the individual objects. The first thing you want to do, if you have a whole group that you want to vertically align is hit under the, under the align to group here, hit this button, which will align all the individual objects to the center. So now you see that those are individually aligned to each other. And after I've individual, after I've individually centered the group, now I can take the whole group as one entity and align it to the canvas, which it was already aligned, but there. So the first thing you would do, I'm just going to undo that would be Align to group, hit the center button to vertically align the objects to one another, and then align to center. Now let's look at the align to group options. So this one here is align group to the top. So if I hit this button, all these objects are going to align to be on this top line together. So you see their top is up here across this line. I'm going to undo that. If we hit this horizontally center button, all of the objects are going to align to the middle. So now they're all centered together in the middle. The third option is aligned to bottom. So if we select this, all the objects, they're going to be aligned to this bottom line here. Undo. We're going to align to the left with this button. Now all of the objects are aligned on the left. Now see here how this little KC client is not lined up over here. 
Technically it is, it's only like this because its text box has the text centered and not left aligned. So for example, see, so technically that is lined up. Same thing with this text box. So if you're trying to left align all of this, you need to make sure that your text boxes are left aligned too. So I'm going to go to textile over here on the right. I'm going to hit this left align button for that text box. I'm going to select this text box and go hit the left align button for this one as well. Now you'll see that the text lines up because I have both text boxes left aligned. So I'm just going to undo that and then do that again. All right, so now let's look at this center button. This is already centered, but if I were to hit it, it lines everything up centered this way. And last but not least is aligned to right. So I'm going to hit that. Everything's going to line up here. Same comment as aligned to left. See, technically the text boxes are lined up on the right, but you need to select the text box and this time under text style, align right. And I'm going to select this text box and go over to align right. So now you see everything is aligned on the right here. Now let's look at the match size area over here on the right. There's three different options. Match size will create the same height and width dimensions for the objects you have selected using the bigger object as the one to model off of. First, let's look at this left option. So this is the width match size, okay? So I have these three solids here, all right? I'm just gonna make them different sizes to start off with so that you can see. Okay, so if I select, if I want all three of these solids to be the same, I'm gonna select all three white boxes and I'm gonna hit this match width button. So that will make the width of all three of these white boxes the same. Notice it did not change the height, it just made the width the same, okay? The middle option here allows you to match the height of all the boxes. So notice right now, these two look like actually they're the same height, but this third one is not. So if I hit this match height button, it's going to match the height of the biggest option, which was this one down here. So just be aware of that, that it's gonna model after the biggest one. Okay, the third option is to match the width and the height. So if I select this, it will make all the boxes the same size as the biggest one. So that bottom one was the biggest one width and height wise, so it made all three of them. Let's talk about the last area for alignment, which is distribute. So we have these boxes, they're the same size now, but we need to align them. We want them to be aligned and vertically spaced evenly. So the first thing I'm gonna do is hit my align left tool because I want them all to be aligned correctly. So now they're all aligned. But now I want them to be vertically spaced even. I want the space between each box to be even. So we do that using the distribute tool. So you can do that horizontally and vertically. So in this case, I want to vertically space the boxes evenly. So that's the second button here. So I'm gonna hit this. And you'll notice now that this space here and this space here are equal. So that's how you vertically space objects. So the, remember the first thing that I did just to review was I needed to align them so you can either center them or, so center them did the same thing. First you gotta align them so that their edges match up and then you use the distribute button, in this case the vertical space, to make the spaces equal. Let's say that my boxes were actually horizontal, all right? Okay, so first of all, I wanna make these boxes all the same size. So I'm gonna select the three of them I'm gonna go over here on the right. I'm gonna hit the match height and width button to make them all the same size. I'm going to horizontally center them so they're all in the same line. And now I'm gonna hit the horizontally space button to put equal space in between them. But you'll notice that there's actually no space in between them because I didn't give them enough space to move horizontally. So what I'm gonna do is take this left box here and I'm just gonna move it over and now I'm gonna select the three blue boxes. They're already centered horizontally, but I'm gonna hit the distribute button to horizontally space them. And now you'll see this space here is equal to this, to this space here. And now I can actually align this whole group to the canvas. If I wanted to center it, I would go up to align to canvas and hit this vertically center button. And now these three blue boxes are evenly spaced horizontally and centered in the canvas. 
A thing to note here when you're playing around with alignment tools, you wanna to make sure that you're doing this on both desktop and mobile. So this is the same canvas as the one I have displayed on the desktop view, but you'll notice the boxes are still white. They're the same size as before. They did not change. So the styling of the things that you're gonna align isn't going to change. You have to do it between both desktop and mobile. So just a note. Now let's look at how to use the size and position area of show it. So just a note that when you have something selected over here on the right, there's always going to be an option to toggle between desktop and mobile views of something. You can manually change the width, height, rotation, and position of an object. So I'm going to select this box and over here on the right under the size and position tab, you'll see that you can change the width, the height, the position, the rotation of this box that I have selected. Same thing with text. And you'll see that you can again toggle between the desktop and mobile. So usually when I'm scaling things, I'm just doing it, you know, by dragging my mouse, but you can do it manually here to resize it. And if I want to move a box, I usually just drag it on the stage. But again, you can use the X and Y coordinates to manually move something. The area here that I most use is rotate. If I want to be specific about rotating something 90 degrees so it's at a you know, per perpendicular angle, I usually will just select 90 here. One thing to note is that when you are scaling things, a box like this will get larger, an image will get larger, but if you scale a text box, it will make the text box larger, but it's not going to make the font larger, okay? So see how the text is just moving in the box, it's not getting bigger. So if you want to actually make the font bigger, you have to go on the right to text style and actually change the size to make it bigger. Now let's talk about horizontal locking and show it or edge locking. Horizontal locking allows you to lock an object to one size of a browser or across the whole screen. So I'm going to show you an example of how to do that. So if I have this image selected and I am going to go over here on the right under the size and position tab, horizontal locking. Selecting this first option here will just lock the image to one side or the other of someone's browser. So if I have this here, let's see, I'm just gonna put it right here. I'm gonna lock it over here. So now if I go publish this page, you'll see that this image is locked over here. It didn't scale, it's not getting bigger. It's just locked to that side of the screen. Same thing, let's say I move it over here to the right and then I publish it. Now it's gonna be locked. Oh, I didn't change the setting. There, I changed it to be locked to the right. So now if I publish it, and go reload it, it's gonna be locked to the right side of the screen. So the second horizontal lock option here will actually stretch this image to one side of the screen or not. So if I have it locked here, it's gonna stretch this image from here to the right of the browser. So I'm going to publish it, oops. I'm going to go to that and reload it. And now you'll see it's the same height and it's locked to the left. Now you notice there's white space here and I did that on purpose to show you. If you want it to actually go to the edge of the browser, you have to make it go to the edge and show it. So I'm gonna move this over here. So now this image is horizontally locked to stretched to the edge of show it. I'm gonna hit publish. So now you see this image is stretched to lock to the right and it goes to the edge because I set it up to be locked in the edge and show it. Same thing if you do the left, it would just stretch on the left side. So let's say I want this image to go across the entire browser. So what I would do is center it, and let's say you leave it like that, and you're gonna hit the full width stretch over here on the right. So we're gonna publish it and see what happens. So now when I reload this page, it's gonna stretch it, but since I didn't have it stretched and show it all the way across, it's kind of limited. So if you literally want it to go across the whole browser, make sure that in the actual show it app, you drag the handles of the image to be across the entire screen. So now if I hit publish, 
and reload the page, it should be stretched across the whole browser. Now I'm on a big iMac, so if I were to drag my screen around, which I will do to show you, you'll notice that it changes. Horizontal locking is a really good option to use if you want a gallery to be full width. So I added a gallery here and I wanna make it the whole height of the canvas. So I'm just gonna click the canvas to see how tall it is. By default, I believe it's 400. I'm going to go to the canvas settings on the right. The initial height is 400. So I'm gonna select my gallery, go to the right under gallery settings. No, I'm sorry, size and position and hit height. Now I'm gonna make it 400. Now I'm going to center this gallery to the canvas horizontally. All right, and now I'm gonna stretch this gallery all the way across my screen so that it will be full width, but I need to select the horizontal locking to be full width as well. I'm gonna pop some images in there real quick. I'm going to change my gallery settings to be a sliding gallery. And I'm underneath the gallery gonna change the space between to be two. So now I have a full width sliding gallery with space in between each image that is horizontally edge locked under size and position. So when I publish this and reload the page, and scroll down to that canvas. Now I have a gallery that is full width across the page. You'll notice there's horizontal locking, but no vertical locking. There is vertical locking, but it will only appear as an option for canvases that are set to grow with content. So more specifically, usually on the blog. So if I go to this blog template and I'm gonna, I haven't done this yet, so that's why it looks like this. But if I select this canvas, over here on the right, under canvas type, it's set to grow with width, with content. So if I select any of these objects and go over on the right to size and position, there's the vertical locking option. That's because this canvas will grow depending on what content is here. If there's more text box, text in this box here, then the canvas will automatically get taller to accommodate that text. Vertical locking will lock an object to the top or bottom of a canvas. In the blog, we use this to lock layers to the bottom of a canvas so that our content doesn't grow on top of it. So for example, if I was using this blog set up like this, I would lock this read more button vertically to the bottom. And I would lock this, this solid here vertically to the bottom. If I had this post excerpt textile, see right now it's set to crop, but if this was set to display, like you'll see, it's already starting to go over top of this read more button. So I would wanna make sure that I lock any layers underneath this text layer because that's gonna grow to the bottom because I don't want the text to overlap. But generally you only see this on the blog um, and you don't really set it up because it's already set up as a template, but just something to know. The other area other than the blog that I will use for edge locking vertically is when I use tiled galleries. So if you have a canvas that has a tiled gallery, you wanna make sure that your canvas over here on the right is set as grow with content because this gallery is gonna grow depending on how many images are in there. So usually when I have a tiled gallery, I have my, my canvas type as grow with content and then I always have a back to galleries button. So in order for this to not be overlapped by this gallery here, because it's gonna grow down, I need to lock this back to galleries layer and the arrow to the bottom. So the option for vertical locking does appear here because I have this canvas set to grow with content. So I would just wanna select my back to galleries button over here on the right, go to vertical lock bottom, and the same thing with the arrow, which is underneath that layer. So I would select both of those to lock to the bottom. So that's an example of how you would use the vertical lot locking outside of the Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's Show It website tutorial. I'll be back next week with a brand new video. If you have a request, drop it in the comments and let me know, and I'll be more than happy to do so.